Hey TV and Buffy fans, welcome back. This is going to be our best and worst episodes of Buffy Season 5 and also our individual MVP. You can find our in-depth Season 5 review on the channel now, so go and check that out. But this is the follow-on to that. So we're going to get right into it and we're, we're going to start with the worst episodes of Season 5, which was a much taller task than the best one because it is a very consistent season really season mm -hmm. five and tough to find really bad episodes and i think most of these fall more on the mediocre side than, than maybe actual outright bad so the yeah. bottom five as agreed by us definitely some compromise but number five is listening to fear so this is one which appealed more to my B-movie sensibilities <laughs> than, than it did Rachel's. And I think, Rachel, you just felt it was a bit of a strange one because it went more into X-Files territory than... Yeah, Buffy. I wasn't a massive fan of the killer snot monster from outer space. <laughs> just not really uh, up my alley. Um, plus, we also come to a little bit of a standstill. Um, I think we talked about when we did our review of season five, Into the Woods, Listening to Fear and Spiral, they kind of go together to um, like kind of halt the season almost at plot points in it. Like obviously the Quella demon being summoned by Ben to clean up Glory's mess is a, is a big plot point. Um, but yeah, overall, I, I do find this episode a bit lackluster and probably because I'm not as big a sci-fi fan as you are the sci-fi elements really just don't do it for me so that's why i think it's one of the bottom episodes but again it's not a terrible episode and compared to like bad episodes in other seasons it definitely is better than you know your average bad episode of buffy just not that great compared to the rest of this season it's a reasonably enjoyable gimmick and there are some good unsettling moments but yeah I, I can't argue too much with that. It does feel a little bit more of a fair one. And number four, that's a good start. What's we've up? got the wrong order. Or, no, we've got the wrong order already because we agreed on Spiral. Oh, we're doing well. Damn. Oh, we did too. Oh, okay. <laughs> start again. That's uh, all well, right. We just did our number four. Again, but <laughs> listening to fear is number four. So jumping back one place to number five. No suspense, it's Spiral. And <laughs> so sp Spiral was the first part of a three-parter, basically, to end the season. Yeah. A, a tremendous three-parter. I mean, it was really ramping up towards the end of the season. And mm. Spiral is still a very solid episode, but overall it was definitely the weakest of those three. It was more of a set-up episode. And I personally thought some of the night stuff was a little bit tedious. So that, that, yeah, that's yeah, probably why it's weaker than the other two. So mm, yeah. yeah well, I, I think, again, as we discussed, it's kind of like, yeah, that those, those final three episodes, The Weight of the World and The Gift, are just so good and have so much action. And Spiral kind of, yeah holds it still for a little bit there is some decent stuff again um we do get a bit of more explanation of glory and like what her um goal is and you know uh it, the winnebago scenes can be quite fun but yeah the nights get a bit tedious um and again it feels like we're standing still waiting for the plot to kind of catch up with the characters so that we can barrel towards the conclusion so again not a terrible episode uh definitely not by the show standards but just not as good and especially when it comes before those two episodes that are so fantastic uh it does kind of diminish this one a little bit that's actually five just to make it clear L listening to fear is four so now on to number three in with a bullet it's the riley centric episode it is out of my mind mm. and i think that sums it up why it's on the list it's riley centric episode we're not really that invested in riley mm. a lot of that stuff in the episode is pretty dumb pretty pretty dull to watch we we get more initiative stuff we see well it's not really the initiative but it's him and graham's there some mm. of his old army buddies and and that stuff isn't great to watch the spike stuff is a little bit more enjoyable in the episode him and harmony always a fun pairing yeah. up to hijinks but yeah overall because of the riley stuff and how much time that takes up 
it, it does drag the episode down. Yeah, definitely. I mean, right. Riley is not a character that either of us are particularly fond of. And I think when we did our review, we talked about how he becomes very insufferable this season. And this is kind of the beginning of it, you know. And I spoke a little bit about how I don't particularly like this angle of Riley suddenly being like, oh, Buffy doesn't love me and I'm not good enough for Buffy. And I think this episode really plays into that. And Mark Blucas, unfortunately, bless his little heart, is not the most dramatic you know, dramatically gifted actor. So, you know, he doesn't quite sell the Riley going insane angle. And it's just, yeah, it's a bit of a hard episode to get through. Like you said, the Spike and Harmony stuff, very funny. Harmony in particular is hilarious in this episode. Um, But that Mm -hmm. can't, unfortunately, save the episode because there is so much focus on Riley, who by this point in time is just getting so tedious in the show that you just want him to go away. So we definitely don't need a whole episode dedicated to him. Yeah, he feels like quite a tacked on character at times. Yeah. I I agree with you. I I think him having these concerns about Buffy's feelings for him is is a bit out of the blue. And Mm. it seems so so much on on him as well, like his paranoia, because, you know, like she pointed out in a season four episode, like, has she really given him any reason to, like, not trust her? Exactly. And the answer is definitely no. You know, Mm. like, a lot of it is him not being able to get over the angel stuff. So. And projecting. So, yeah. yeah. So we agree on that one. That's out of my mind. Number three. Number two is Shadow. So Mm. this again it's partly a taste thing. I enjoyed the glory snake a bit more than, than Rachel does. Um, but definitely, again, it's a little bit of a fair episode. So I, I think that's why we've got it here. It, it doesn't really add that much to the overall plot of the season. Mm. So it's, I mean, out, out of the episodes, it's probably one of the more middle of the road ones, I think. Mm. And I think there's a thing with the season five worst off episodes. Like in other seasons we've done, the, the episodes we've chosen have actually been bad episodes. Whereas the ones we're choosing on this one, it's more that they're just middle of the road episodes. You know, they're average. And the thing is, they come across as being much worse because they're in a, in a season that is full of like so many great episodes. So yeah, I think Shadow is just one of those average episodes. This show and bad snakes they've got to get over their thing with bad snakes this is like the third one we've had so far um and i mean glory's always fun i always love whenever she's on the screen but i do think the rest of the episode yeah is a bit of a just just average it's just it's just a bit of a slog to get through and again it's one of those ones that the plot kind of takes a little bit of a break and it can be hard to be taken out of the action and stuff for so long but you know um, not a terrible, terrible episode, but again, just one of those kind of average ones in a season that is full of fantastic episodes. Least favourite of the season. Again, a little bit of a compromise. I think the real fans know it should be Buffy and Dracula, or Buffy no. versus Dracula, but but sadly, as a compromise, that's not even on, on the list, so make of that what you will. But our number one, agreed number one, <laughs> is... Olive the troll and um, <laughs> trying. That's that's yeah. the episode, and I, I think the main reason is we just find it a bit of a random placement in the season. Like it feels yeah. a bit out of step after you've got quite a dramatic ep- episode previously with Into the Woods. Mm. This is this weird sort of comic episode. There's some good stuff in it once again. Like I think the Willow um willow onra stuff is the highlight yes. you know them sort of yep. sparler, sparring trying to outdo mm. one another they're, they're good the troll stuff is fine but it, it's a little bit silly and w- we both agreed then i think it's partly the way they handle the fallout from the last episode with yes. this buffy blaming as well like the way mm-hmm. honor and sandra both do it in the opening scene yeah and and buffy doing her annoying comedic sort of crying was quite great into us so yeah yeah that's why we're not so hot on it overall mm. yeah i think yeah. you pretty much covered everything there um just yeah mm. just a bit of an oddly 
oddly placed episode. Comedy didn't quite land. Um, some of the lines are funny. Like I do like at the bronze when Olaf's asking for babies and, and Spike just turns to Xander. He's like, yeah. what do you think? The hospital? Yeah. And Xander's like, no, we can't, <laughs> whatever. And I thought that was quite funny. But yeah, just an odd episode. Like you said, Sarah, the way they decided to play um, Buffy's reaction to Riley leaving is is really odd and doesn't quite work. And yeah, just not a great episode overall. And definitely one that I tend to skip when I do rewatches. So, um, Keith is wrong. Buffy vs. Dracula is a fantastic episode and does not belong on this list, which is why we have Triangle, yes, because no. it's an actual bad episode. <laughs> but, mm. yes, I, I definitely Triangle as the worst. And, again, not a terrible, terrible episode, but definitely not a great one. And I think it really was the placement of it that turns – I think maybe if this episode had been a bit earlier in the season, it might have been re- um, received a little well. But, as you said, we're really getting towards the dramatic part of the season and things are really happening. And then <clears> we just have this weird comedic episode just kind of popped in the middle of all of this drama and it feels a bit grating. Top five of the season. This was definitely a much easier one to mm-hmm. pick, but – Starting off with number five, it's the terror-centric episode, Family. Oh, yeah. Big episode such, for terror. Oh, such a great episode. Um, I think That's I listed this. Yeah, I did a- I listed this in my top 10 Buffy character-centric episodes because this is, I think, the episode where we really start to get to know Tara. You know, we really start to understand her more as a character. There's a great little callback to a season four episode where she and Willow try to do a spell to locate demons and Tara... Uh, sabotages the spell and it's such a little moment that you almost forget it and then when it comes up in this episode you're like oh okay and I think that Amber Benson does a really good job with showing Tara's conflict and showing her reaction to you know her family anyone who has grown up with an abusive or a controlling family can definitely relate to her here and I think that the Scoobies really step up in this episode because obviously this episode does deal with the fact that Tara is at this point still a little bit of an outsider in the Scooby gang you know they they don't quite know how to deal with her and they're talking about you know having to go to her birthday party but then at the end you know they all stand up to the family and you know basically help Tara stand up to them as well and it's just it's so beautiful and it's a great step as far as Willow and Tara's relationship goes as well and bringing them closer you have a really funny moment with Spike at the end of the episode when he punches Tara to prove that she's not a demon and then he's all like you know oh it's just a bit of spin to keep the ladies in check oh you're a piece of work (laughs) I like you and you know it's, it's a really really strong really fun episode and I don't think there's anyone who doesn't get a little bit teared up at the end when Willow and Tara are floating above the dance floor which is just so beautiful it's just just a really great great Tara centric episode and really kind of brings Tara into the Scooby gang you know 100% from here on out she is a very integrated and integral member of the Scooby gang and this is the um, episode that solidifies that yeah so a bit like what they did over on Angel with Fredless for Fred yes. I think this feels yes, like the definitely. version of Tara yeah so yeah massive episode very moving ending like you said some some good guest stars i mean i know we said the family were a bit like stereotypes but you know but they pretty play it good well. actors anyway. mm. yeah the father yeah. especially is quite menacing you know yeah so that a good sort of character actor so no mm. yeah strong episode so that's family for number five. Number four, speaking of character centric episodes, we've got The Fall for Love, which is a spike centric, which of course, a massive crossover episode with the Angel episode, Dara. Uh, really great crossover watching those two side by side. And yeah, not only a big spike centric episode, but a big. Buffy centric episode on her ongoing quest to learn more about her past, more about the Slayer heritage, and again, great chemistry p- between the two actors as they spar back and forth. And we get some good character development, some good backstory as well, the way they work the backstories in- into it. And yeah. Some some great moments, some great direction and editing in, in the episode and yeah, some really iconic moments from the show. So and and I really like like the ending of the episode personally. So that's that's full for love, I think. R- really top draw episode for me. 
Mm. This one was a little bit of a compromise, but I did say this when we were doing our review. On a technical level, and as far as the writing and acting and direction goes, yeah, this episode is top tier. I mean, I don't think anyone can disagree with that. The whole episode, it almost feels cinematic, you know. Um, And again, this I listed in my top ten character-centric episodes of Buffy, because it really is. It's it's, it's, It's a fantastic look into Spike as a character. On a personal level, I obviously do not enjoy Spike as a character, and I do find it slightly problematic that we are watching Spike glorify killing two women of colour, even though I know that wasn't the point of the episode, and that was just kind of an accident. They didn't actually think of the unfortunate implications. But, like I said, if I put my Spike bias aside, absolutely, this is definitely one of the best episodes of the season, and... Yeah, the, the crossover with the episode Dala just makes it that much more epic and that much more cinematic. So, yeah, Spike bias aside, definitely agree with this being in the top five. Damn it, I didn't talk her into putting Crush on the list. That's annoying. That, that would have been No, that one you will ground. not. More, no. That would have been more ground <laughs> That one is terrible. <laughs> no. I was not terrible, but the Drew Factor as well. But, okay. Drew's always good, but again, we'll I don't move think on. Spike being an crush, incel. Crush, yes. is, <laughs> crush is pretty great. Crush is pretty <laughs> great. Okay, so number three, an episode we can agree on is Checkpoint. We think it's quite underrated. Like it probably yes. doesn't get enough credit, if anything. So, you've got the Watchers Council back. Quentin Travis, brilliantly played by that, actor yeah. especially, and here to put Buffy through the ringer. They've got a bargaining thing. They've got some information on glory. And once again, it's a wonderful calling statement for Buffy as a character and as a show because of the way the episode ending, where by Mm -hmm. sheer will and personality, she turns the tables on them and points out that they kind of need her more than she Mm -hmm. needs them. And, and we end up with the reveal of Glory being a god, which is a great end line as well. So, mm-hmm. but again, a, a bit like Family, it's a really great conclusion with the Scoobies in the episode. Like, yes. a great collective moment for them. Fun to be had with the council as well. Like, you know, when they're doing the little interviews with all the friends and Willow and Tara kind of stumble into very proudly asserting the fact that they're lesbians and then the guy being like, yeah, I, I, I meant your relationship with, to, the, to the Slayer, not with each other. Or Anya desperately trying to prove that she's human. Or even Spike flirting with the female watcher who's all like, oh, I did my thesis on you. You know, just all of the interviews are just really fun. And then, of course, yeah, Buffy asserting her power you have that great scene between Buffy and Glory and Dawn at the house, which is just a like fantastically filmed scene where you really feel the tension um, and you really feel the threat of Glory. You know, Glory coming into Buffy's house, that kind of, yeah, overbearing, like, I can reach you anywhere. And then, yeah, Buffy asserting herself at the end and telling the council that they suck and that she is the one who holds the power and getting Giles reinstated as her watcher. And it's just a fantastic moment. And yeah, like you said, the Scoobies coming together again and reasserting, you know, that they stand behind Buffy. And then, yeah, just that wham line right at the end. Glory isn't a demon. She's a god. And everyone just went, whoa, what? That was such a big wham moment for the series. And, yeah, I, I do think the checkpoint gets overlooked. Again, it's in a season that is so good, that is full of so many great episodes, but I feel like this one definitely deserves more love, especially if you love Buffy, because this is such a great episode for her character and to watch her stand up to the Watchers Council again, as we've seen her do in the past. And it's always great when she tells the Watchers Council to go shove it. So definitely a fantastic episode, but I think deserves more love all around. No surprise in our two and one, but our number two, it's an extremely uncomfortable and difficult to watch episode, but for all the right reasons, essentially, but because of how, yeah, how hard hitting and, and hard to watch it is, it's one that you're not probably going to watch rewatch too often, but it's it's a great achievement in television and in drama and it is the body, and I, I think it just sums up the experience of death so well yeah. and the process of dealing with death and really top-class acting in the episode, wonderful yes. direct, uh, direction. And, and you get the odd sort of lighter moments that are well-placed as well within the episode too, which you need. 
Like it does stay true to the characters, but definitely gets across just what they're experiencing and the surreal nature of death, especially when it is such a unexpected death like like this one is in the episode. So yeah, really emotional episode. Every time yeah. you watch it, it's hard not to get emotional. So. Mm. I don't think anyone would argue with this episode being in the top two because, like you said, it's just such a fantastic episode. Hard to watch. I did skip it on this rewatch, but, you know, it's one mm. of those ones that you don't have to watch it very often. It sticks with you. Sarah Michelle Geller in this episode is just brilliant. How she did not get any kind of acting nomination from this episode I will never understand because the whole like those first 10-15 minutes of the episode where it's just her reacting to Joyce's death the way she carries those scenes and the panic and just you know grief in that she manages to portray in those scenes is so good but I mean everyone is so good in this episode you know all the Scoobies and like you said the way that we see all the different reactions to grief you know like Willow not being able to figure out what to wear that's a very real you know thing when you have to go to a funeral it's like what what do you wear how do you dress appropriately Anya not quite understanding how to deal with death Xander getting angry and punching the wall you know all of this is just so good and I think I talked about this when we did our view but i really um having had some recent experience of death in the last year or so mm. i really came to understand and um identify with why the episode was called the body and the significance of seeing a body of someone that you have loved be just a body and i remember talking about yeah like when when i had to see the people that i had loved and it really does hit you how it is now just a body it's not the person anymore and so i think that yeah the title of that episode and the fact that they do keep focusing on joyce's body is very very significant and something that i think you really start to identify with once you have had that experience and you can really like yeah, I, I, like kind of, yeah, understand it. Because I remember when I was younger and I used to watch it, I'd be like, okay, it's called The Body, obviously, because Joyce is dead. But it, yeah, it wasn't until recently that I really started to understand that title and with having the body there. And I remember Christine Sutherland actually talking about how, because she did, she played the body the entire time. And I mean, if you want to give acting props, she doesn't flinch and the camera stays on her for like really oh, long God. periods at a time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, she was talking about how as the week went on, they had to progressively make her makeup worse and worse and worse until she was essentially walking around the set looking like a corpse because, sure. you know, they had to make her up that way. So yeah, kudos, definitely kudos to Christine Sutherland for holding, you know, all those poses and obviously a big thing about this episode is the lack of music which I think is you know I was actually talking to Stephen about this recently um because I was watching something that didn't use music and I was like when you take the music out of it it really forces you to feel the uncomfortableness and the discomfort because music can take you away you know you put a nice mm. piece of music on and you can feel kind of like oh it's pretty and, and we can feel this but when you don't have music you're just forced to feel that heaviness in the air so yeah the body i've gone on a very long tangent because it's just so easy to talk so much good stuff about this episode but mm, no one would fun. argue having this in the top two i think because it's just such a great episode of television one is of course the epic conclusion to the season the gift which probably is the greatest buffy finale of any of the seven seasons yeah yeah, it really pays everything off with the whole glory and Dawn as the key arc. And it, it's just pretty much a perfect episode from start to finish, from that really unique opening we get with a recap from all 100 episodes up mm -hmm. to that point. And, and just a great example showing why Buffy is the Slayer and the appeal of the character but then the way it just builds the stakes throughout the episode, the way they get together, form this plan, but then there's conflict over if push comes to shove, do they sacrifice Dawn? Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> and, and, like, just, yeah, how serious it all gets between, like, Buffy and Giles especially is, is strong stuff, so... It's, mm -hmm. it's a great episode very cinematic as well like the visuals of when hell is opening and all the rest of it mm -hmm. and once again because claire kramer as glory has been built up as such a such a devastating like 
threat across the season, it means that it's again such a big deal when finally she is defeated. So yeah. yeah, yeah. And we talked about in our review that tower is a fantastic set piece. You know, mm. you get a great epic fight between <clears throat> Glory and Buffy with them both trying to reach Dawn, which is just one of my favorite fights, you know, of the series. It's just fantastic. Willow gets to shine because she gets, you know, she reverses the spell that Glory did on Tara, which, you know, ends up um, weakening Glory enough for Buffy to get close. And then, of course, that beautiful ending, you know, I mean, we've talked about this. We both agree that this could have been a perfect ending to the series. Like, if The Gift had been the series finale, it would have been a fantastic finale. Though those beautiful quiet moments with Buffy and Dawn up on the tower just before Buffy jumps, that absolutely breathtaking score. I love that score for The yeah. Gift. And then, you know, that just that epic final shot of her, of her tombstone, which just has the most perfect epitaph ever. She saved the world. A lot. I mean, if that doesn't sum, sum up Buffy Summers, it's just, it's fantastic. I mean, you pretty much said it all, and we really covered it in our review. The Gift really is the best finale in Buffy, and I might even go as far as to say it's the best episode of Buffy because it is just, I have no flaws. I have no faults with The mm -hmm. Gift. I think everything about it is just perfect. So no surprises that that is our number one. Yeah, I, I think it's a 10 out of 10 episode. Absolutely, absolutely. Just update the list and, okay. and, and just say that <laughs> it's my number two behind her. Okay, so, oh, so okay, I, okay. I won't rush through, I won't run through the whole list. I'll, I'll do that another time. But okay. yeah, just to say Hush is still my number one. But I get that, Hush is the, fantastic. The gift is very close behind it at number two and... Mm. And although there's many, many great episodes of Buffy, I think it's fair to say there's only a select few that I would say are 10 out of 10 episodes. And, and those are definitely two of them. So that's why, why they're at the top. So that's our bottom five episodes, our top five episodes. Let us know what ones you would pick and which ones you agree with in the comments. So it moves us on to the MVPs of the season. Rachel, you can go first. So I'll just give a quick honourable mention. I almost gave this to Glory because, I mean, she is just fan. Fantastic. I mean, Claire Kramer, Claire Kramer does tend to play a variant of this role, but I think this was the best match for her. So it almost was Glory because she's such a great villain. However, given everything she goes through this season and what she has to take on and her, her personal journey, I have to give it to Buffy Summers because I watched this season thinking, girl, how are you still standing with everything that you are going through? You know, she has to deal with the revelation about Dawn, the responsibility surrounding Dawn, Riley leaving, her mother's illness, her mother's death, Glory coming after her. And she does all of this while still maintaining, like, her sense of like responsibility and self and fun. She's still Buffy. She hasn't reached that broken Buffy stage yet. And just watching her this season grow stronger in and off herself. I really like that after Riley leaves, she doesn't crumble. And instead she's like, no, I'm going to spend some time on me. I'm going to decide who I am, you know, by myself. I love watching her reconnect with her Slayer line and learning more about what it is to be a Slayer. It's one of the reasons that I do like Buffy vs. Dracula because it does actually open that thread up of like Buffy discovering her Slayer self and of course we see her make the ultimate sacrifice at the end of the series and do what she's always done which is to save the world a lot and I just think she is so fantastic in this season and I think I've mentioned this as we've been reviewing our rewatches Buffy was a character that I didn't connect with when I was younger I don't know if it was a personality thing or if I just didn't particularly like her but when I used to watch Buffy she was never one of my favorite characters but she now has become one of my favorite characters watching <clears> her from an older perspective and just seeing how young she really is and how she has the weight of the world on her, sh her shoulders and I think this season really shows it and she comes through so fantastically so yes almost gave it to Glory because let's face it Glorificus is fantastic but Buffy Summers is awesome and she totally deserves it so she is my mvp for season five what about you okay well <laughs> yeah definitely one of one of the best seasons for buffy as a character without doubt right up there and definitely helps that she had such a good foe so glory is right up there as well 
Another honourable mention, I'll say, is actually Dawn. I think she has a really yes. good debut season. And, yes. And considering a relatively newcomer in Michelle Trachtenberg, and for someone with her experience, a really tough role to play at times, I think yes. she she does really well. So she makes a, a personal statement very well in the season, mm-hmm. I think. But, yeah, Rachel knows where this is going. She knows I'm going to go with Spike, so I'll just get it out. Uh, over with Ew. quickly because we've had you know these debates ad nauseum <laughs> but he he is one of my favorite characters of the whole show and i still think this is h- him at his peak i think we really see it in a couple of episodes in particular C- crush i do love but fall for love especially is a great statement for the character and i think to sum up my feelings on spike i'm just I'm really into anti-heroes on TV. I think anti-heroes are some of my favourite types of characters. And I think Spike, when he's at his best, is is just one of the best anti-heroes on TV. I think dramatic scenes with him this season, Masters gets to prove that he's a really good dramatic actor. He's still got a a lot of charisma in the season. He still has memorable one-liners in the season. And... We'll just have to disagree on the character development. For me, I think we do see character development from him. And I buy more into him, you know, his change over the season than Rachel does. So that's a personal disagreement. But, yeah, I'm going for my boy Spike. All right. Still going very strong for me. Yeah. So, okay, but this is Keith getting me back for liking Buffy versus Dracula. And this two, is his equivalent. Two good, two good MVPs chosen. <laughs> there is no wrong answer. <laughs> okay, so, okay. But I do have a very serious question to ask you just before we finish this season five wrap up. I just need to ask you one thing. Yeah. Do we suspect that there is a connection <laughs> between Ben and Glory? Hmm? Very good. Had to be done. (laughs) Uh, And very clever because you fooled me into thinking you were going to go for the throat with Spike or something like that. I thought you were seriously going to grill me. Uh, No. No, There we go. That is glorious. That's a great way to end. So thanks for listening, guys. Keep watching Buffy. We will return very soon with our season six thoughts as well. And we're going to wrap up the whole show in the coming months and move on to something different but let us know what your best and worst episodes are and your mvp for season five thanks guys see you later bye